On the poster, he's billed as the visionary director behind 300, and Zack Snyder has finally brought the unfilmable graphic novel Watchmen to the screen. The world will look up and shout, save us. And I'll whisper, no. I am Eric from scenestealers.com and with me today to review Watchmen is Aaron Weber, otherwise known as Alpha Monkey from transbuddha.com and this movie, I brought Aaron here for a very specific reason, this movie means a lot because the graphic novel was a huge part of your personal life. Oh yeah, up. yeah without a doubt, it was one of the most amazing books I'd ever read at the time. Funny enough, we actually have a clip of Aaron's reaction when he found out Zack Snyder was directing Watchmen. <laughs> and so now that we've actually seen the film, what's your reaction, Aaron? <gasps> wow! That was graphic. Uh, you know what? A lot of this movie is graphic as well. And I'm not even talking about the idea that superheroes are treated uh, like psychological freaks, which is one of the things from Alan Moore's. I'm talking about the actual violence in this movie. It was, it was fetishized to a 300 level, and I really wasn't expecting that. Yeah, it was just... Uh I wasn't ready for it either. I've seen a lot of rough stuff in my time, but you know, it was just kind of a <clears throat> in the gut every time over and over and over again. So where did this go off the rails for you? Uh, signing the man who directed the world's longest Bowflex commercial was a <laughs> good start. Um, after that, you know, I, I'm willing to say that you can try to take subject matter like this seriously, do it justice, and it, for his credit... You have to. Yeah. You to, make, to do this, you have to. Look at The Dark Knight. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, visually, he, it looks like they tried really well. They got a lot of beats right, but it just seems like um, they knew what the pictures were supposed to show. They just didn't know what they were supposed to mean. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not going to uh, argue with you about, uh, about Zack Snyder's uh, 300 tendencies. The slow-mo in this movie was insane. And for me, the biggest problem is, is that Alan Moore was trying to recreate a reality where superheroes existed. And this is what you know, the world would have been like with superheroes in it, and this is what the world would have done to them. But instead, every time I saw a fight scene in this movie, it seemed like there was a superhero behind it, like a superhuman person. And there's only one superhuman person in this movie, and that's Dr. Manhattan. So why were these fight scenes, you know, all explosions and slow-mo and loud sound effects and all of a sudden, you know, the metal and everything? I don't know why he had to stylize that. I almost wish maybe Darren Aronofsky would have pulled out his realistic oh. uh, uh, camera from uh, the, the wrestler and maybe done this a little grittier. Maybe the big stylized thing, maybe using the Dave Gibbons, you know, colors wasn't, dare I say, the right thing. You got to give Zack Snyder credit for actually trying to give different narrative voices. Right. There's a lot of characters in this movie, there's a lot going on, and the fact that he was willing to dedicate big chunks of a pretty long film to all these different voices is actually, that's a kind of a, that's a ballsy choice. All, all the study, subtlety was gone. If there was any hint that you might miss it because you're dim, you weren't paying attention, you have a blackout. But the film is going to remind you, you again and again and again. But you said yourself that your wife was kind of lost. So here we are with this conundrum, and that's why I'm giving this the f***ing Swiss fist, man. Because I can't figure it out. But figure that out. If it, it's it, like a, it's it's like some of it makes a you know a huge amount of sense, and then other parts it seems like he's beating you over the head with it. I will I will say this. Uh, reading the book as I did uh, last week again probably uh, tainted me in the fact <laughs> that it's very hard for me to talk about the movie as just a movie. Now that said. I am giving this movie the most irresponsible uh, rating I can give it right now, which is The Swiss Fist. This is complete neutrality. This is something JD invented, and, and you know, God bless him wherever he is. Uh, I'm using The Swiss Fist because as much as I'm divided and mixed and pissed off about certain parts of this movie, I'm going to see it again this weekend. <sighs> I'm going. I have to see it again. There's too much to, to, to get to uh, in, in one sitting, I think, and there were some gross oversimplifications, yeah. especially at the end of the movie, that seemed to not be with the theme of the comic book. But now I need to decide for myself, did that theme work for me as a movie? If, if The Watchmen is not a comic book, and it's not now, it's a movie, what we just saw, does it work as a movie? And my answer right now uh, is I don't know. We just saw the film, and I'd really like to sleep on it. So. I'm gonna watch it again, and uh, I know that uh, m my friend is looking at me like it's the biggest cop out in the world. I gotta say, uh, 
I, I see your point. I'll give you points for kind of sticking with your conviction on that. In my regard, though, I got to say, as a movie, as an adaptation, as an assault upon my very childhood itself, <laughs> I have to give The Watchmen rock fist way down. Way down. Way down. I, um, I think even as a movie, it fails. There's not a lot that I can say is redeeming about it. Every time it makes an inch towards, oh, this isn't so bad. No, it's Lucy just yanks that football right away. So <laughs> I just, you know, bless you for wanting to see it again this weekend. I see it as, you know, if, if I catch the last three minutes of home improvement, I don't stick around for the next episode. <laughs> I keep moving. So that's your time, baby. Why, why did I read the book? <laughs> why did I read the f***ing book, man? Ten years, I haven't read the book. I just should have stopped my fanboy thing and just said, Eric, don't read the book. Watch the movie. You'll have something interesting to say. But instead, I'm stuck because I read the f***ing book.